In this video, I'm going to show you how I made these very cool push button stop dogs, or at least that's what I'm calling them. And to get started, I need to drill holes in my new workbench and they have to be accurately laid out and precisely drilled. So I'm setting up a fence with just a piece of MDF and marking out the locations. And I'm going to use my newly made portable drill press to drill the one inch holes. I want to make these two inches deep, but I got ahead of myself. I really need a stop block in here so that they don't drill deeper than that. And this is just a block of plywood that I cut to the right size and I'll hold it in with a spring clamp. Each dog location needs two holes, one's for the dog and the other's for the button. And those are spaced apart, one and three eighths of an inch. And I'm gonna mark that on the fence as well. And I gave this a lot of thought before I started as to how many of these that I'm gonna need. And I came up with a total of nine, so that's 18 holes that I have to drill. And I go into a little bit more detail on why I chose these locations in the website article. There's a link in the description. I used my trim router to very slightly chamfer the edge of the hole so that it wouldn't be so sharp. And then I could move on to making the toggles or flippers that make these dogs work. I made a prototype to begin with and I did some trial and error, a couple of different angles. And mainly what this angle determines is how far the dog will pop up out of the hole when you press the button all the way in. And also it can have an effect on how smoothly it operates. With the first one made, I used that as a pattern to mark out and then cut a bunch more on the bandsaw. Next is the tricky part and that's cutting a tunnel between the two holes at the bottom for the flipper to fit in. And to do that, I made a very simple drilling guide for a half inch drill bit. And that makes it so I can drill in on an angle to remove the bulk of the material and then clean out the rest with a half inch chisel. And even though this seems like it should be done really precisely, you just need to be able to get the flipper in and have it work properly. And that's not really that difficult. I'm going to be making the dogs from a chunk of spalted maple. This is from a tree that I had cut down a few years ago. And the first step is to roughly flatten one side so it will sit down flat on the table saw while I'm cutting it. And I also need to straighten the edge that goes up against the fence. And then I can cut it into strips that are about one inch thick. And here I'm experiencing a little bit of binding, but we know how to handle that. Back the stock out, recut the kerf, and do that as many times as it takes so that it stops binding.
have a lot of spalted maple, but not enough that I can throw away these scraps. So I'll put those back in the closet and maybe use them on another project. I'm gonna pull out my router table and I'm gonna use a half inch round over bit to make the dowels. This is probably my favorite way to make dowels actually, bigger ones anyway. And you really need a router table with a fence to do this. It allows you to run the stock through safely. And then you can actually fine tune how round the dowel is by running it through over and over again, rotating it slightly each time. As you saw in the opening, I have a different wood for the buttons. I'm using walnut. And once again, I'm making those dowels on the router table in exactly the same way. Next, I can get the dogs cut the length. I'm gonna trim off the end first and then bring it over to the first hole and mark the length and then bring it back to the miter saw and cut it to that length. And then when it goes in the hole, it really needs to be either flush on the top or slightly recessed. If it's sticking up, it'll hook on something and get really annoying very quickly. Then I can cut the button, except it's shorter, and the way you do that is you push the dog all the way down, and that way the flipper is all the way up underneath the button, and that'll give you the correct length that that needs to be. Now even though these work as they are without anything extra, I want to add a little bit of friction to the operation, so I've got a V-block set up on my drill press, and I'm going to drill a 3 8 inch counterbore for a 3 8 inch spring to fit in, and that will push against a very short piece of dowel, which in turn will push against the side of the hole and give me that friction that I'm looking for. I only had enough springs to do the dogs, but I came up with another way to do the buttons, and that was to use pieces of this foam, and that actually seems to work as well as the spring. So that's another option right there. So I guess the last question to answer is, what would you use these things for in the first place? If you're cutting biscuit slots or drilling dowel holes or even dominoes, if you can afford one of those machines, you really need something to put the stock against. And that's what these things are for. And I made the three locations to accommodate different widths of stock. And also these things line up with the dogs that are on the other side of the bench. So I can use it for wider panels as well. 